Oh, oh, we're back, we're back, we're back. What's going on, family? Welcome back to Tariq Elite Radio. I'm your gracious host. My name is Tariq Elite Nasheed. Ready to chop up good game as we always do. But by the way, if you haven't had a chance to get your Hidden Colors 4 DVD, you can go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Also, we got the Hidden Colors 4 official shirts available now at TariqElite.com. You get the official Hidden Colors 4 shirts. Go to Tariq Elite, T-A-R-I-Q-E-L-I-T-E dot com and get those shirts right now, ladies and gentlemen. So we're ready to chop up good game as we always do. Today's show, we're talking about when bed-winching backfires. There's been a lot of stuff that's happening where a lot of Negro bedwinches are getting wake-up calls. And now the, the bedwinching is starting to backfire on a lot of established Negro bedwinches out here. The game is changing. You know, at, at one point, being a bedwinch, you know, they, they thought there was some security with that. But no more. Doesn't work like that no more. The white supremacists, they're pretty comfortable with the system the way it is right now, so they don't really need you to run interference for them. They can use you, but they don't really need you no more because the white supremacists are very, very comfortable with the situation they're in right now. And when you're dealing with an evil regime like the white supremacists, there's no real non-white collaborators. You can collaborate, but that's not going to save you. I mean, let's look at Nazi Germany. In Nazi Germany... When you had that evil Nazi regime, you had Jewish people who were collaborators with the Nazi soldiers and the Nazi regime. They would help the Nazis find other Jews and punish other Jews. There was one female in particular, Stella Kubler. That's her name. Y'all Google her, by the way. Now, Stella Kubler was a very attractive, very well-known Jewish woman who during the time of Nazi Germany her family and her they were tortured so she agreed if they let her and her family go and not persecute them she would collaborate and help the Nazis locate other Jews who were hiding and hiding their identity she would help them find those Jews and go take them to those extermination camps and for years she assisted the Nazi government posing as a double agent she would go in and locate Jewish people who were hiding and the Jewish people who were hiding would get executed and she would get money for every Jewish person executed she would get like $300 in in German money at the time but the Germans would give her money for finding Jews who were hiding after all that I mean this woman helped them kill thousands of other Jews this was a Jewish person who was a collaborator And after all that, they still got this woman's family, Stella's family. They got her family, not her, because she she was able to, to bounce. But they got her family, her mother and father, and still put them in them damn camps and exterminated them. So a lot of Negro bedwinches are getting that type of wake up call. See, the Negro bedwinches thought that, well, we can just throw a little pussy at white daddy and we'll be safe. We'll just collaborate with white mommy and white daddy and just throw those men because that's who you really want. You want the men, don't you? You want those men, so we'll help you get them niggas. And a lot of these women have been playing that Negro bedwinch game and then when they start getting a wake-up call seeing that other black women and particularly Negro bedwinches 
are getting thrown under the bus. And understand, when I mean Negro bedwinches, I'm not talking about black women as a group because most black women are not Negro bedwinches. The Negro bedwinches are a very distinct group. The Negro bedwinches are a very distinct group. But don't nobody trust traders. See, we got that trader thing that we've been trying to latch on to since Africa. Doesn't work like that. We'll throw that tribe under the bus and then we all end up on the damn boat in the same chains. Africans learn that the hard way. Jewish people who were collaborators learn that the hard way. They sat up there and they collaborated and found other hidden Jews and then they ended up in the same extermination camp getting the same gas inflicted on them so people who are designated as non-white in any particular environment and in the German environment they were classified as non-white especially in 1935 during the Nuremberg trials but there is no collaboration with evil if you're a non-white person and the Negro bedwinches they learn this the hard way they always seem to learn this the hard way there was a lot of Negro bedwinches out here throwing Nate Parker under the bus, the brother who has the movie called The Birth of a Nation that's coming out. They were throwing him under the bus because a suspected white supremacist female falsely accused him of rape and he was acquitted. And these Negro bedwinches were running to do interference for white daddy, throwing him under the bus anyway to give the white supremacists a shield so when they started throwing that man under the bus they can point to the negro bedwinches and say well it's not racist because those negroes were doing it first see these same negro bedwinches won't say a word for black women who've been raped by white supremacist males we put up a story on melanoid nation where there are black women who are raped by cops nobody's saying anything about that today on Twitter um, one of my favorite comedians Leslie Jones very funny sister but a lot of people the white supremacists have been going in on her and they got mad because a white supremacist gay dude was harassing her and his minions were harassing her and his Twitter page ended up getting deleted so as a retaliation some of his white supremacist supporters they've hacked this woman's phone and they allegedly put up some like nude pictures of her and they're calling this woman all types of derogatory names and see none of these women's groups and especially these negro bedwinches they're not really defending that sister not for real for real see the thing is man the white supremacists they're throwing us all under the bus they're not giving black women a pass they're not giving black men a pass they're not giving black children a pass they're not giving the Negro bedwinches a pass. So the thing is, there's one particular Negro bedwinch, Crystalline Karazin. Now I've talked about her on the show before. She had a website called, I don't know if she still has it, the Beyond Black and White website. It's basically Negro bedwinch headquarters. This woman goes out of her way to throw black men under the bus she has this thing where she tells other black women how you gotta find a white man the the joys of finding a white man and being in a relationship with white men and having children with white men i mean there's a whole movement that this woman has participated in and spearheaded and just to give you an idea of her get down. Let me play you a clip of one of her earlier shows. Let me stop my Mac in music for a minute. Because I've talked about her on the show before and some of her fuckery. But here's a show that she did. Um, a broadcast she did on Google Hangouts. Where she was conversing with another Negro bedwinch. And they were talking about how great it was to be with a white man. And her and this Negro bedwinch were shitting on brothers. Just This is an idea of what you're dealing with. Listen. And I don't want a world where I wake up tomorrow and it's just me and them. Right. Because I don't, I don't either. Exactly because I, 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 I don't feel secure. I don't feel secure. Now that's crystalline talking about she doesn't feel secure. She has more of the valley girl voice and there's some husky voice um, bedwinch that's on the phone. I don't know who she is. I think her name is Brew Kellen Blue, something like that. I don't know who she is, but I'll look her up. 
feel secure. They, you can't feel respo- You can't feel like these people are responsible. Look at how they act. I mean, here you have make it turn it around full circle. Um, here you have this white dude, this abstract white dude that you elevate just so they can, so that he can bring down, you know, your quote unquote women, black women. Who the fuck? I mean, to me, it encapsulated what I saw happen in real time is probably what has happened for millennia. What is yes. happening? The beginning. Yes. That they are so yes. willing to sell women, uh, sell black women. Uh, uh, to to the highest bidder, so yes. that they can look good, so they can get in, but they they don't value. And this is this is a to me, this is a psychic. This is a genetic flaw. Oh, now she's saying this is Crystalline saying that it's the genetic flaw with black men who have sold black women out that I'm yes. seeing right now. A it genetic is, is flaw. Here's the thing. I said this in one of my videos. The black men, they call women like you and me bed wenches. The black men suck, suck more white dick than anybody. They he really cannot do. keep the white man's name out his mouth. You ask him about anything, and he's going to tell you about the white man. And my thought exactly. process is, well, since you haven't talked him up so much, now I'm, I'm interested. But right. the, you keep talking about him and how powerful he is. He won't let you do anything. He's keeping you from getting jobs. He's keeping you from getting an education. He's keeping you, he's making you fuck black women and leave and, and create babies that you walk away from. He's forcing you to be double dipping your dirty dick plate, pretending like you you straight when you gay. He's for, so because this man got so much fucking power and he is able to kick your ass every which way but but loose. Now you got me interested. So you are the one who sent my ass over to the white man to find out what's going on there because you can't fucking stop talking about his ass. So it's the black man that's making these women bed wenches because the black man, when you start talking about white supremacy and the white man this, she's like, well, he got all the power. So y'all done talked him up. Let me go fuck him. Anytime I come to you as a black woman, for black woman to black man and say, listen, we need to have a conversation about what's been going on, and I have some questions about your role in it. The first thing he's going to fucking tell you is that is that the, the white man did this and white man did that. So if this is what you're going to do, if this is what you're going to do, then I'm going to be interested in this white man because clearly he's the he's the head nigga in charge up in. The- really, you were interested in him anyway. Stop it, this bitch. You're not. So why would I come to you and submit to you when every time I ask you to be accountable for your shit, you telling me about him? So then that makes you a broker. Now you're an agent. You're not a patriarch. You are brokering patriarch E and trying to get a fucking commission out of my ass. No, so what I am going to do is cut out the fucking middleman since you keep talking about him and I'm going to go straight to the, to the, to the head guy. I'm going to go straight to the guy who actually runs things. And if that makes me a bed wench, Fuck you. It's your fault. Because it's every time fault. I win- It's your fault. You heard it from her mouth. It's her fault. I mean, it's your fault, black man. It's your fault for making her a bed wench. If you say, hey, man, we live in this system. We're both in this system of white supremacy. Well, I'm going to go fuck Massa. <laughs> It's your fault, okay? Exactly. I talk to you. You tell me about him. So my thought process is, listen, I'm a woman just like any other woman. You keep talking up another man, I'm going to go check that man out. Exactly. Yeah, why so is you, 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 why you, is this? Well, that's called a double dick clutching, but but whatever. Why is man so important to you? Why yeah. is he so important to you? Right, and you hate your own, listen, you hate the seed of your own men. You see a woman with a black child and you think she's she's beneath you, that she's garbage because she has a child, a black child. A black child, not a mixed child. So here I am, exactly. So here here I am with a black child or, or, or black women in my position who, who have a black child. You don't even value your own progeny. You don't even value your own progeny. You guys suck. <laughs> no, they don't value their progeny. That's why they're so angry at you because you found a white man who va- who did. Who? Va- Ooh, they. We mad because she found a white man. See, that's they. The, the, the Negro Bedouins. They got this thing because they can go find some little ratty white dude, who usually it's like some ratty type of dude. They just mad because you got a white man. It's this thing where they. It, it, 
nobody really gives a fuck about who you date but the problem is once you date this white dude you start sounding like a white supremacist and then you start being double agents in black society that's the problem that we have I don't have a problem with any if ladies if you want to fuck 20 white dudes I do not give a shit but the minute you come back into the community talking about well this nigga is this and y'all start running interference for white mommy and white daddy that's a problem I can tell you, there's been a handful of times, less than five times, that Kayla has said, um, my husband is her stepdad. Because he... Now, let me, let me stop it. This crystalline chick, she has a baby by a black man. So now she's married to a white dude. And... This is the poison that she's putting in this child's mind. She has a black child with a black father and she has a now has a white stepdad. And it, this is the fucking sickness that this bed wench is putting into the mind of this child. It has been a father, what a father is supposed to do to protect and provide for her. And, he, and when she says, she goes, when I get married, I'm going to have, he's going to walk me down the aisle. Right. Now, what oh, does that say? That one. What does that say? Yeah, but see, they're going to... Ain't that what the DeBarge family said? Ain't, isn't that dad? He's white. He was a protector while he was molesting all the fucking kids. They're going to come for you with that one now, too. You know what? <laughs> fuck them. Fuck because them. See, not... Okay, y'all. Here's the thing. I... Uh, fuck y'all, black men. Y'all listen. Now, listen to this. Now, when it comes to black men, fuck them. Fuck y'all. This is her about black men now. I live in a 3,300 square foot house, not because of me, but because of my husband, who is white. And why do I live in such a large house? Because he provided that. He did that. Massa he did that. Oh, she's like, I live in a house. Who got it for me? White daddy got it for me. Boy, does that sound like a fucking slave or what? That's slave talk right there. That's c typical grade A Negro bedwinch talk. Yeah, of course, Massa got you. We live in a system of white supremacy, so we all got to go to Massa. And that's, that's what it is. Don't sit up here and point your finger at a, another black person and say what they're doing and not doing. I mean, hell, being a damn bedwinch, that ain't nothing new. You saying that like it's revolutionary. House niggas got to live in a house. Ain't your house. House niggas, when they used to have to get fucked, oh, the house was very nice. It ain't your house. Because if there was a divorce, you ain't getting shit. They make sure of that. Was, uh, you know, he, he works really hard for us. He provides really hard for us. And they can say whatever the fuck they want. I want to see what they're doing. What are they using and providing? What are they doing? All they have are dicks. All they have, all they have is their dick and their swag. No, you can miss me with that. You can miss her. Oh. Boy, she is dancing for Massa, ain't she? She is dancing with Massa, ain't she? And she said, all you got, black men, are your dicks and swag. Your swag. And here is the deal. The ones who have more to offer, we see what they're doing. That's why I tell everybody to go pick up his marriage for white people because he laid it out. Okay, because okay that's, enough, that's, that's enough of that. I'm doing, okay, so that was just to give you an idea of the Negro bedwench mentality of this crystalline chick. So she's known for that. That's her whole thing. This whole thing, black men bad, white men God. Black men bad, white man God. That's her whole shtick. And she congregates other bedwinches who think in the same vein. Now, she had a broadcast a few days ago where she was going to invite this white dude. His name was the Veganator or something like that. This white dude who has dated black women before. And she wanted to have him on the show to talk about the joys of swirling. But he got on the show and started shitting on her and started saying, hey, I ain't with that squirrel shit. He started kind of shitting on black women. Now, that broadcast was deleted, but she made an apology video afterwards where this woman actually started crying. She started crying because this white dude 
who she thought was going to give up all of these props and accolades to the joys of swirling, he ended up shitting on black women. He flipped on her. And then he made a bunch of other videos saying he ain't with that interracial dating shit. He ain't fucking with sisters like that. He's dated sisters, but he's going to get him a white woman, which is the mentality of most suspected white supremacists. I mean, that's, that's how they think. They've always fetishized sisters. And white women fetishize us too. Let's be very clear. But let me play the clip of her doing her apology where this is after the white dude Dister got on the show shitting on sisters talking about he ain't with that interracial swirling shit no more. I'm going to talk about right now. So, um, and I'm totally going back on what I said about like not battling people, which I, I don't, this is probably like my, um, my statement. Okay. Now you notice the whole vibe sounds a little different now. Listen how humble she sound now. Now that the white dude then shitted on her, you know, the, the video I played before, yeah, fuck them, fuck them, fuck them, fuck the black man, fuck all, oh, there was all, boy, there was a lot of confidence there with all that fuck the black man. Now that white daddy turned on her, a white dude shitted on her and said, hey, I ain't with that interracial dating shit no more, it didn't work out for me, I want me a white woman. Now she's humble as shit, she's tearing up. The reason why I'm doing this video is not to battle, but to apologize. Because um, I had the Veganator, the um, Andrew, his name is Andrew, on to um, do a contrary, uh, a counter to you know why I don't want to you know why I don't want to swirl, and it was meant to be sort of just like a uh, you know, hey, not everybody's going to like you type of thing. You know, not everybody's going to be on your team. And, you know, you go where you're celebrated and not tolerated. And that was really the goal of me having him on the show, on, on my show. It was not to uh, change his mind about what he, you know, what his preferences were, because that was never the goal. Um, but and and I thought we had a a rather uh, uh, civil conversation. Well, she's really really careful with them words, and she has tears in her eyes when the white man shits on her. Oh, you 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 gotta really you gotta really be careful with your words. But since um, he was on the show, he has done probably three to five follow up videos and i've seen his uh his subscribers go from 97 and and double like 100 percent and it's not because he's so amazing talking about the vegan lifestyle and you know healthy eating and working out he has found his success he has found his voice Bashing black women. Oh, she's crying. Oh my God. And I'm responsible. And I have to apologize. I feel so bad. Because oh, I inadvertently... Oh, Negro bedwinch tears. Oh. Now that white daddy, the one you've been propping up, whose dick you've been sucking nonstop, he didn't shit it on you. Now all oh, the world is over. Oh. Bitly got another person to pile on the whole nobody likes you nobody wants you you're so disgusting black women you should just kill yourself and i did that and what was really heartbreaking was that um i have 40 percent of my fan base are men and I observed video after video after video that this man made. And not one man, black, white, or otherwise, came to the black woman's defense. Whoa, whoa, whole 
all the way the fuck up. No, 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 no. Didn't you just say I played a video of you? Black men ain't shit. We ain't protectors, so I might as well go get this white man. If you can't protect me, you can't provide, you can't do shit, you ain't shit, you just got dick and swag. Well, now we supposed to come to your rescue after you done shitted on us? I'm over here with all of this dick and swag. I can't make it over there. What, what, what? My dick and swag is in the way. That's what you said. All, that's all I have. How you want? Prote- no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. If you you don't neglect on paying insurance, and when you get in an accident, all of a sudden you want to file a claim. Nah, <laughs> you haven't paid no monthly premiums. You haven't showed any loyalty to black society or black people. You have not paid your insurance monthly. Now that your car has crashed, now you want to get this claim and file a policy and all this. Nah, don't work like that. No. Don't talk about how come we ain't coming to your rescue. You said, fuck us. We ain't got nothing but dick and swag. We can't protect you. The white man is better. Well, damn, you made that bed. Put on your goddamn house slippers and and your, your, your robe and just go ahead and lay in it. Not one. And what I saw was gleeful delight from men of all races and I saw black men going on saying hey you're so funny I'm gonna send your your um uh yeah your videos to David Carroll and Tommy Sotomayor Ugh, don't mention crispy you're gonna have thousands you're gonna have a thousand subscribers in no time <laughs> and I sat there and I watched that and I was like oh my god Oh. People really are successful by tearing us down. They can find their success. I sat there and I watched the Vaganator <laughs> do a video yesterday of that on on vegan eating or whatever. They got 97 views, and then he does another anti-swirl, anti-black woman, and in 16 hours, he's got over 200 views and delight and glee from everybody, and I'm just like, it's not, the hurt is not for me, because I don't care, I have been bashed so much on YouTube. My goal has always been to uplift black women. And I feel so bad that I gave the platform to somebody else to hurt us. And then I was so disappointed of all the quote unquote good men Dry your eye, who baby. sat by and did nothing and said nothing. And I saw black women run to their own defense only to be mocked to do so. We can't defend ourselves or we're mocked. And then there's nobody to defend us. And it's so heartbreaking oh, that my no, sisters no, really no, have no one. Oh, no, 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 no. All that fuck them, fuck the black man. No, no, no. That that's how it is. No, you sat up here and gave props to white daddy. He's your protector. Now he's not protecting you from the white supremacists. It ain't just black men. Notice that. Other white men ain't coming to your rescue either, are they? Well, nobody's coming. The black men. No, no, no. White men ain't coming to your damn rescue. That's the problem. That's what you're really crying about. All of these white male followers you have. See, you they always throw the brother the brothers under the bus. She's mad because all of these other white dudes who fetishizes her, they're not coming to her damn rescue because that's part of the white supremacist um code. They don't throw other white supremacists under the bus for nobody. That's what she's mad at. None of the white dudes are coming to your goddamn rescue. They have not um, dissed that white dude, the veganator. They haven't said shit about him for you in your defense. I thought you said that the white dude was your protector. And he's your baby stepdad. And he's such a good stepdad. He got you on a nice, good old plantation. 
Come on. And my heart breaks. Not for me, because I have a good life. Oh. Um, my heart breaks knowing what I know. And it's for the other women. And I feel such regret about that. I really do. I want people to understand that I don't do this to to get attention yes, or do. to um, uh, make myself more important. Okay, I okay, really, I'm, I'm tired. Okay, really I, I'm, I'm tired of bedwinch tears. I'm tired, but y'all get the point. You get the point. I'm tired of hearing her bedwinch tears. God damn, all that fucking crying. Why, daddy, don't love me no more. Shut up. That's what you get. Ain't no, I'm not taking glee out of it. Welcome to the system of white supremacy. What the fuck? You thought you was exempt? What you thought sitting up here talking all that shit about black folks was going to somehow get you a nice little comfortable place in the big house where you're not going to get a beating every now and then? Oh, please. When are the black folks going to wake up to that stupid ass shit? That never works. That has never worked. It didn't work in Africa. It didn't work with the Jewish collaborators. It is not working with us. It didn't work on the plantations. It doesn't work. We're both in the same damn boat, unfortunately. White mommy or white daddy ain't going to save either one of us. That has never worked. Trying to throw other black folks under the bus for white mommy and white fucking daddy. That's not going to happen. It's never going to work. Bedwinching, that's why we mock bedwinching because it never works. And then when bedwinching backfires, they come on down with the mush mouth, the snotty nose. Well, why didn't you help me? No. Oh, no. You said I just got dick and swag. And you were rubbing your nose, rubbing our nose in your piss. And there's another video I want to play of this sister who went on a, she was going to go on this little blind date and she saw that the Negro Bedwinch thing was not going to work for her either. Now, I don't know what this sister's name is. I saw this on YouTube and she's a, a, a black female. She has on a gang of fucking makeup, her makeup. You know, she know how some of those chicks, their makeup is too light for their face. She's one of them kind. She got on some, um, green contacts a hazel contacts you got like the number two yaki weave that's straight so she can try to look more exotic this chick is from dallas and she's talking about how she met this white dude i think on tinder or something and he turned out to be a white supremacist so listen to this but i really wanted to share this with y'all okay so <clears throat> anyway y'all know i live in dallas and I had a bay, then I didn't have a bay, so I was kind of depressed because I kind of thought that me and him were going somewhere. So my friends were suggesting that I try out Tinder because that's an easy way to meet people um, because I don't get out very much and I'm not that friendly. <laughs> I'm not that friendly. Like I have a natural bitch mean face so guys don't generally approach me because I th they think that I'm mean so I was like hey you know what I'll try it out I never wanted to try out Tinder though like it never was my thing but I said you know what I'm gonna try it out so I made me a profile and I instantly started getting like super likes and messages and stuff like that once I match with other guys so um, I matched with this one guy and he was white and oh my god like he was so freaking fine like i was like oh yes honey this is my dream man right yeah and so we were missing <laughs> that's a dream man just dreaming for a white daddy <laughs> each other and he told me that he was a uh pisces as well and i was like oh shit because i'm a pisces so i'm like oh shit i can't i can't deal with any more pisces i've dealt with one that nigga kept me in a hole for four years. I could not dig myself up at that hole. So I was like, I'm never messing with another Pisces ever again. But he was so 
interesting and intriguing to me. Like the first thing he asked me was, um, have I ever read the 48 Laws of Power, which I have. But my favorite book by Robert Greene is The Art of Seduction because, I mean, come on, I'm a woman, you know what I'm saying? So I need to know all of that. So um, he was like, he would buy me the 48 Laws of Power because I said I didn't have it anymore. Um, and that's how the conversation started. So he seemed really into himself like he was you know he knew that he was good looking and that's one thing about pisces man when they know they fine like i'm a pisces and when you know you fine it's like i don't want to mess with you he was very cocky and it was it was very anti-seductive so i was like whatever you know we we switched numbers and we were texting each other and i was like whatever you know i'm not gonna talk to him anymore so weeks went by and we weren't like exchanging texts or, or conversing so um he went back to tinder and messaged me on tinder one night and i had just got off work because um i work at night now and he messaged me good night paid so i was up so i saw it and i messaged him back um and he immediately called me um he was like what are you doing up and so we started this great conversation which kind of went left because um he kept asking me was i really who i am in the pictures and i'm like dude i've sent you a video like that's me like i understand that people are very insecure about who they really are and they catfish people all the time but i'm me like that's really me i don't have any reason to lie so he was like all right so um and his name was stephen that's when he was like, so what are you? Are you mixed? Are you black? What? And I was like, I'm other. And he was like, what? <laughs> Boy, that's bed winch one-on-one. They ain't never black, are they? Oh, she's other. Okay, other than other what? What's other? Other than what you think I am? Shit, what does that matter? You are attracted to me. I'm attracted to you. What does it matter what, what race I am? Why does that matter? It, it has nothing to fucking do with anything it, it doesn't it's just a freaking shade of brown that's all it is boy they cannot say black can they boy a negro bedwinch will deny oh i'm mixed i'm german irish dutch portuguese cape verdean i'm other i'm lesbian i'm bi um every they everything but black i'm a republican they'll go all over to get away from black different shade of brown so <clears throat> that kind of started a heated conversation if you will because i guess because i didn't identify with what he felt i should have identified with that led him to start speaking out about things that i that, that i felt very uncomfortable and that's what the, let me let me give y'all some game there the white supremacists when they're trying to find them a negro bedwinch that's exactly what they want when they ask them what they are that's one of their test questions they know he knows this is a goddamn black chick but they like to hear them identify so they'll know how far they can go with their white supremacy so the minute uh, Negro Bedwinch starts talking about, well, I'm other, I'm mixed, I'm Creole, I'm d they, the white supremacists love that. They're like, oh, cool. So no, I can go to the second stage of white supremacy with this woman. Conversing with him about. So that's when he started asking me, so have you dated a lot of black guys? And I was like, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot because a lot sounds very bad in in reference to like women dating um but i was i was like i wouldn't say a lot but the majority of men that i have been with have been black yes now let me give y'all some more game let me give y'all some more game a lot of white supremacist males they don't when they date women any women white or black they do not like for them to have had a number of black men preferably no black men but they do not like for them to have been with black men at all, especially white women. A lot of white dudes, if they find out a white woman has been sexual with a black man, they just won't date them, period. Or this is why whenever you see these white women, when they get older and they get settled, and if something comes out about them having sexual relations with a black man, the white woman always say some shit like they were drugged. That's where all those the Nate Parker, Bill Cosby shit comes from. When white women are in college, when white women are younger, they all say they got drugged 
and that's how they end up fucking some brothers. Oh, I did. I got. I, I, I took some drinks and I woke up and there was just dick residue all over, and I didn't know. I smelled like Afro Sheen. I didn't know. Is that bullshit? All right. But the white supremacist male, they don't like white or black women to have been with a significant number of other black men. This is why a lot of the Negro bedwinches go out of their way to talk shit about black males, especially in the presence of a white man. Especially in the presence of a white man. That's why y'all know that video I played earlier of the crystalline chick. Her and her friend, black men ain't shit, fuck them. They were talking all that shit. She spends all her time shitting on black males because that's what white men want to hear. Um, other. And he was like, all right. So then he asked me, was I a catfish again? And then we get back to the question again. So you've been with a lot of black guys. And I'm like, why do you keep asking me that? Like, why does that even fucking matter who I've been with? Because that's their thing. They they want a pure bed wench. Go look at like the old episode of Roots. There was an episode where Kunta Kinte was going back to get this female that was on the boat with him. And she said to him, no, I'm saving myself for Massa. Massa don't want me laying up with nobody else, especially no other Negroes. That's Bed Winch 101. Go back to Donald Sterling. What did Donald Sterling say about his Bed Winch? V. Stiviano. Hey, what, what's all those black guys you got around you? Hey, you know, it's cool to invite a couple to my game, but don't, don't be inviting all them niggas to my game. Don't be around. Why are you hanging around all those black guys? Why don't you act like a nice white girl? He's telling a black woman this. Remember that? Go listen to some of those Donald Sterling tapes. But that's what that's about. They don't like black women who've been defiled by too much Negro dick. And he was like, I'm just saying, you weren't afraid of disease? Disease? Are, are you... I mean, what are you trying to say? You know, I wanted him to say it before I assume. I said, what are you trying to say? He said, well, you know, black men just, you know, all they do is fuck. You know, they take pride in fucking a lot of different women. They're very promiscuous and they spread disease. I was like, wow. Now, this is funny because the white supremacists, look, I travel all over the world. I've seen these white supremacists in other countries fucking with transsexuals, fucking with going to brothels, fucking with... Um, Kids, I've seen motherfuckers up in Thailand holding hands with motherfuckers look like they 10. So they got a lot of fucking nerve to talk about somebody being promiscuous. The white supremacists are the masters of fucking anything, everything that moves. I said, where are you getting this information from? He was like, you know, it's it's everywhere. You know, you can find that information everywhere. I said, well, I think it's population control. I said, because if you go on CDC.org and you look up HIV and AIDS, you're going to see that it's predominantly in black communities where those black people are low income, unemployed, uneducated. And another thing, most of the new AIDS cases are coming out of Eastern Europe, but let's just keep that on the low. Um, so to me, that sounds like a population control and genocide. He didn't think that I was dead educated. I don't really think. I said, and, 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 and I said, let me, let me educate you. Um, the next time you go to the library, since you like to read books, um, why don't you look up the book of STDs? I promise you, you won't see a lot of pictures of black people in that book. I'm just saying. Yeah. So <clears throat> then we went on into talking about the Black Lives Matter movement and how he felt that it was a terrorist group. I'm like, it's not a terrorist group. <laughs> he, is t he was doing all the testing. Oh, he was testing to see how much of a bed when she was. When they start talking about Black Lives Matter as a terrorist group, you're dealing with a full out white supremacist. He was trying to see how much of a bed when she was. Because three women created that hashtag that turned into a movement. 
So it's not a terrorist group. He was like, yes, it is. That, that black, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, targets white police officers and hates, hate against white people. Okay. So what is the KKK? Is that, is that not the same thing, but like opposite? So, then he started talking about how black women um, mooch off the system and welfare was created for them. I'm like, no, welfare was created for the poor white woman. It was not created for, well, now all you see is, uh, is, is black women using up the system and mooching off the money. Like uh, they know all they have to do is fuck and they can get about 25 to $30,000 from the government. And all they, all they need to do is just keep having kids. And then the black men are going to leave their, their children. They're not going to take care of home. So now you have, uh, black women with six, seven kids mooching off the system, getting welfare and food stamps and all this free money. And, and that's another thing about the white supremacy. See, the white supremacists, they require their Negro bedwinches to not only throw other black men under the, uh, the bus, they require the Negro bedwinches to throw other black women under the bus. See, that, that, white, that was the white supremacist letting her know Negroes and Negresses they're going to, you're going to have to distance yourself from all black people if you want to deal with me. That's all he was saying to her. All he was saying to her was, if you want to fuck with me, Mr. White Supremacist, you're going to have to distance yourself from other black people because this is how I feel about black men and this is how I feel about other black women. But you're kind of special. And if you throw other black folks under the bus, then you can be with me. You can get the privilege of being with white daddy. That's all he was saying to her. And this is why the Negro bedwinches who go for that deal, they, they have nothing but vitriol for other black women too. That's why they don't really do shit for other black women. They pretend to be feminists. That's why I always called them pretend feminists. They're, there's not a feminist bone in their body. They pretend to be feminists. They can give less than a shit about another black woman. They better not do anything for another black woman because white daddy will get mad. Money instead of getting a job. I was like, oh my God, how do, how, how do we match? So I wasn't quite ready to give up on the conversation. Ironically, I'm still holding the phone after this man has said all these bad things. Oh and Lord. And that this right here is the Negro bedwinch mentality. After all that, this sister said, well, I wasn't really ready to give up on it yet. That right there is the goddamn problem. This white supremacist then sat on the phone, shitted on you, shitted on black people, shitted on black women. And you're like, well, let me see if I can work something out clear that he is a closet racist and he doesn't know um and he had the nerves to tell me that he was in the peace corps how the fuck were you in the peace corps and you have this idea of a certain type of people that's what the peace corps is all about the peace corps ain't about no damn peace that shit is about colonization they look for people with that mentality to to be in the peace corps so when they go to these so-called third world countries they can go and drain the resources and shit on the people that's why wherever the peace corps is the people are fucked up i know black folks let that light bulb go off in your head once in a while damn you know um and we ended i ended the conversation after he blatantly said that black men were animals blatantly said that black men were animals. They're nasty, they spread disease, and they're animals. And I could not fucking believe my ears. I had never heard anything like that. And it really just destroyed my image of tender, Dallas, how I feel about white men, because y'all know I like white men. I, I, I've never dated one, but I do like white men. Still holding on to that bedwinch dream. And see, and when the white supremacist shit on you, you come to us. How come you didn't protect me? It don't work like that. And it just destroyed my idea and image of like how I felt like things have changed and we are really moving into a better place. But it just seems like a lot of racist people are just coming out the closet now and they're like, hey, it's so discouraging to live in Okay, that's enough for her. That's enough for her. So y'all get the idea. And it ain't nobody coming out the closet. These motherfuckers been out the closet. Because white supremacy ain't never stopped. White supremacy has never stopped. Ain't nobody coming out the closet. They've been acting like this. 
But that just goes to show the mentality of some of these Negro bedwinches out here. They hear all this shit, and it, it has to be an extreme for them to say, hey, I don't know about that, because she's never dated a white guy. She's been fantasizing about it, and she is the fear of the unknown. She's like, well, damn, if he's talking about black men or animals, and he's shitting on black women, how is he going to really treat me? That's the only thing that's stopping her. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Tariq. It's Raymond. How are you, man? I'm good. How you doing, Ray? I'm good. Um, I actually called you the last time. Remember, you were, um, I think, in London or Britain or somewhere like that. I can't remember shit. There was a lot of people. I think. <laughs> I'm the one that commented that the damn phone number wasn't working. Okay. So what's on your mind, Ray? Um, nothing. I've had a lot on my mind. Um, I'm 19, and you could describe me as quote unquote woke as fuck. I like to use that phrase, but I fit that description. Um, it's just. It's just a lot, you know, Tariq. I, I'm studying clinical psychology. I go to a predominantly white school. I go to a private school. I'm about six hours away from New York City. And, you know, people are really, people would rather live their whole lives as sheep than open their damn eyes. It's sad. All right, Ray, I'm going to have you call back. This nigga, you ain't talking about a goddamn thing, Ray. I don't want to hear your life fucking story. The show is about to end. This nigga want to call up back like he's in a damn therapist's office. God damn, let's get to the point. I'm about to end the show. I wanted to, to have some people chime in and say what's happening. Nigga, I'm not goddamn Oprah Winfrey. This nigga, well, I live no, in New York. No, people are really... Hello? What's up, really man? Turn the, Turn the radio down. Turn the radio down. All right, Reverend, let me call back. This nigga, you ain't talking about... Hey, you turn your radio down? Hey, what's Tariq. up, man? Tariq, what's up? What's up with that, brother? No, man, what's up? What's your name, man? Yeah, what's up, man? This is Morpheus up in the room, man. I want to all highlight you right quick, man. What's on your mind, Morpheus? Things is up. See, I know, man. Like you know, these these uh these these females, man. They basically they they, they want to get on the winning team, you know. They they abandon the black man, and they're looking at it like, well, this is zero, this is a zero sum game. So I want to be on the winning team, right? So they abandon the black man and say, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna stand on the sidelines until you get your shit together. You feel me? That's how. That's the way it seems to me. Okay. All right. All right, man. Well, that, that's your opinion, man. Thank you for the call, brother. Okay. I don't know the fuck this nigga talking about. Uh, let's get one more call. Y'all are not really good on the calls today. Y'all, I don't know what y'all talking about today. I know it's the um, the end of the month. The good weed don't come into the first, so a lot of y'all smoking the bullshit weed. That they're out there selling on the streets right now. All right, what's up? Who's calling? One more time. Let's get one more time. What's up? Who's calling? Hello. Hey, Tariq. It's Emmanuel. What's up, Emmanuel? Where are you calling from? I, I'm calling you from Germany. What's up, man? Yeah. I was, I'm just listening to your show. Yeah, there you go. What and you? I just want to say one thing about this Negro bed winches. Yeah. In Europe, there are a lot of Negro bed winches. Oh, yeah. A lot of them is so unbelievable. Like, if you bump into a black woman, they give you attitude if you're a black guy. And they only date white guys. It's, un it's, it's unbelievable, man. Well, yeah, you got a lot of sisters who go to Africa. I mean, go from Africa to Germany. And some of them will literally, exactly. they'll fuck the first white motherfucker they see when they get off the boat so they can have an anchor baby. They got that really big up there in Germany. Exactly. I, I mean, it's kind of difficult. It's kind of really difficult to date them black women around here it's very almost impossible you know because they have this attitude uh towards black men it doesn't matter where you're from they have attitude towards black men and it's just disgusting really. now now where, really. where's your where's your family from what part of africa your family from uh zimbabwe zimbabwe um yeah. how are things in zimbabwe right now uh not really good you know uh, uh, let me just turn up, let me just turn down my voice. Yeah, uh, it's not really good because um, I think the political structure, in terms of Robert Mugabe, he's driving. He has driven the the, 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 the the economy the wrong way. You know, a lot of corruption. Well, I, I'm gonna put it all on Mugabe. They put trade sanctions on Mugabe. A lot of the West, they put trade sanctions. They did. On they did. Yes, 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 they did. Because what happened is, after 1980, right, they had an agreement. 
that after 10 years, they would return the farms that were taken by the white man to black people, right? So what happened now is uh, in 1995, uh, I think it was Margaret Thatcher who went out and then Tony Blake came in. And instead of the British government giving the compensation to the white man, because that was the agreement, the agreement was you have to give compensation to the white man and we take the land. What did Britain say? Britain said, no, we're not giving you any compensation. That's why Mugabe had to forcibly take the land. Right. I mean, we, that, that was justified. because Absolutely. They, uh, did not, yeah, they did not keep the word. Absolutely. Right? And plus, uh, Ian, Ian Smith, when they were running it as Rhodesia, they wanted it. They, they said that it was going to be a white supremacist regime. Those were their their exact words. So, yeah, they exactly, they, exactly, ex exactly. But I mean, what happened now uh, after they took up, took the farms? I think there was a lot of uh, mismanagement, basically. They should have uh, managed it properly. I mean, they started stealing. They started distributing the land amongst themselves instead of distributing the land amongst uh, the greater people. They took the mind for themselves. And, you know, they just um, ran the country the wrong way. I mean, I, I, I admire his ideology, his policy of taking the land. But the way English things were managed, they managed stuff the wrong way. Okay, but and we got we always got to put things we always got to put things in the context of how the white supremacists they put um, sanctions on them, they've sabotaged them indirectly and they had to have new trade partners. But yeah, I don't want to get too deep in that, man. Email me so we can chop up game about that, man. I'm about to end the show. Okay, okay, brother. Thank you, brother. Okay, brother. All right, brother. I don't want to get too political here and just change the whole thing. But anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Y'all go to TariqElite.com, get those Hidden Colors 4 t-shirts, go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3, and all that good stuff. I will chop up game with you guys.